Today is Palm Sunday. Today is the first day of Holy Week. Lit is gone. We are done. We are now into the, I guess you could say, the Super Bowl of the church year. This is Holy Week. Today begins with Palm Sunday, and then Thursday, we have Monday, Thursday, when we gather with Jesus around the table, and then on Friday, Good Friday, we go to the cross, and we bear witness to Christ crucified on the cross, and then on Saturday, Saturday, we hold vigil at the tomb. On Saturday, Holy Saturday, we light a fire with our Lutheran brothers and sisters at Christ the servant, and then we bear witness to the empty tomb. And then next Sunday, one week from today, we will shout, Alleluia, for our Lord has risen. Today, though, today, today is today. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is the day we hear again of Christ riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to the acclaim of what must have seemed like the entire city shouting, Blessed is the King! Men and women and children cried and they put their cloaks both on the donkey on which Jesus rode and on the road before Him, befitting the King. The city burst with joy because the hope Jesus provided for the people, their Savior had come. The true King was riding into the city to take back power. He who raised the dead, he, Jesus, he raised the widow named son, Jairus' 12-year-old daughter. He raised his friend Lazarus from the grave. Grave, what would he do next as he rode into Jerusalem? As Jesus rode in to the acclamation of all the people and to the fear of the king and the priests and the scribes, and all those that held power tightly. What was going to happen? But today is Palm Sunday. Today is not Easter. Today is not the day of victory. There is, in fact, a world of events, as I already have said, a world of events between this Sunday and next Sunday. Joy will come again, joy greater and deeper than any Palm Sunday cry. But first, this is important for us as Christians, we need to dwell every day in Holy Week and savor every day of Holy Week. Today, we must begin about Jesus being handed over to the authorities and what that means. All who put their cloaks on the road before him will rip them out from under his feet. All those that supported Jesus will betray him just as Peter did. Once, twice, three times. Have you ever denied Christ as your Lord and Savior? as Peter did. This week, we will dwell with Jesus as he suffers, as he is ridiculed, as he is tortured, as he is crucified and dies. On Palm Sunday, this first day of Holy Week. Jesus is the Savior. The crowd senses He is. They know He is different. He is special. There is something about Him. God is with Him. But He will not save as they anticipate He will. He is not the kind of Savior they want. He is not the Savior uh, that they are making Him to be. God is not who we want God to be. God is God, and so is Jesus as He rides in this Holy Week into our lives. Jesus will not save as they anticipate He will by making Israel a great nation once again, by throwing off the Roman oppressor, by going toe-to-toe -to -toe with power. 
in declaring victory in the fight. No, Jesus does not work that way. God does not work that way. This week, we learn what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to let go of everything, all power and control, to let go and, and suffer with God as we suffer with those who suffer in this world. We let go this week. We empty ourselves just as Jesus emptied himself for us. We learn to empty ourselves for others. We learn about what it means to sacrifice as a disciple. We learn this week what it means to go to the cross for one another. We learn this week what it means to go to the tomb and weep and grieve. We learn this week what it means to rise with our Lord and Savior. Blessed is the Lord indeed as we shout it, as Jesus enters this week into our lives. Blessed indeed is the Lord for he will save in an entirely unexpected way. Jesus will enter into our lives in ways that we never dream. Our faith will be renewed in ways that we never imagined. Jesus will come to us into the quiet of the hour. Jesus will come into us by our prayers, into our hearts, and will bless us. Jesus will come to us because he will save us by pouring himself out for us and for others by answering, by answering. Jesus answers hatred with love. Love that embraces, passionately embraces every single person, no matter who they are, what their story is, what they have done or not done. Jesus embraces, God embraces us this week. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He will do this for love, by love, and in love. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, because death will not contain him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the one who brought a son, a daughter, a brother to life, will himself be raised. The first fruits of God's promise, victory of life, over death. God's promise that each and every one of us who suffers some form of death will be raised to new life. Join me. And those who share in his life, death, death and resurrection will sing and dance, dance before the Lamb of God, seated upon the heavenly throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.